I hope you're ready for some excitement, because today, we're heading to a theme park. But before we go, we have to reminisce on Spongebob Season 8. I'll admit, while I do remember seeing a good few episodes on TV, I didn't see too much of it at the time. By then, I had gotten addicted to the internet and watched YouTube for entertainment more than television. I also think My Little Pony had me in a chokehold when most of the episodes aired. Not sure why I'm confessing that. But for some reason, whenever I'd tune in, I would almost always catch the episode Glove World R.I.P. Or Glove World Rip if you want to be a little silly. I don't know if they just aired this episode an absurd amount of times or if I just had the weirdest timing, but it seemed like I never missed a showing of this. I recently rewatched it in preparation for this video and I got a good few laughs out of it. I gotta admit, Patrick chasing the crowd with a giant hammer without any context was pretty hilarious. Basically, the episode went like this. SpongeBob and Patrick hear that their favorite theme park, Glove World, is shutting down. They go to the park to have fun for one last time, and everything seems to be incredibly unsafe. Kind of justifying why they need to shut it down. A little over halfway through it, they decide they're going to fix Glove World, but they only make it worse. In the end, it turns out they're only closing Glove World so they can open Glove Universe, a much bigger theme park. Though it should be noted that Glove World still appears in later episodes, while Glove Universe is hardly ever seen again. Outside of Nickelodeon Flash games, that is. And one particular Flash game made in honor of the episode was Glove Universe. This was a collection of mini-games that was updated over time. It's similar to Legends of Bikini Bottom, which we've previously checked out. Nickelodeon liked doing compilations like this every so often. This time, the goal is to rack up as many prizes as you possibly can. You do this by playing mini-games around the park and earning points. You also earn tickets, which you can use as currency to play bigger or more interesting games. A few were added for Valentine's Day in 2015. For now, let's start with the top left. This is Balloon Blaster. Funnily enough, it's one of the few with no instructions. If you ask me, it could have used some, because I was very confused at first. You have to shoot your targets to inflate your own balloon so it bursts before any of your three opponents can burst theirs. Occasionally, Patrick will come up and block you. Really makes you want to shoot him with water, doesn't it? Well, don't. You need to hit your target. Ironically, I had a really hard time winning this one. The opponents are just too good at it. Or maybe I'm just too bad, one or the other. You get tickets and a prize that correlate with how many points you earned. You also see how many you need to unlock the next prize. The prizes are either objects from the show, or just cool toys inspired by it. One thing I'd also like to note is how the environment is so pleasing to look at. I like that they really nailed down the feel of playing games at a booth in a theme park. Thankfully, I don't think they give out fish in little bags as prizes. That would be even more unethical in the ocean. Now let's do another balloon game, Pop Till You Drop. This one's pretty fun. You're told to pop a certain number of colored balloons, then you have to click at the right time to aim a dart as your crosshairs move randomly throughout the screen. You can even throw one at Patrick if you care to waste a dart just for the sake of making him pay for getting in your way. Then the next one is the first we need tickets for. Five of them, nonetheless. It's called Fiery Fist of Pain 2. Obviously the successor to the Fiery Fist of Pain from the episode Roller Cowards. Many might recognize it as the episode that gave us this reaction image. I imagine this is what many of you picture whenever I refer to one of these games as terrifying. But I've mentioned before that my child self had a personal vendetta against this episode. This is because at the end of it, Spongebob and Patrick are given their spines that apparently fell out when they rode the fiery fist of pain. At the time, I frequently played the movie adaptation on PC, which had a whole level dedicated to the fact Spongebob and Patrick didn't have spines. As we all know, the AWE movie on PC is widely considered one of the greatest games of all time and is absolutely canon to every Spongebob incarnation there's ever been. So how could they possibly make this mistake? You know, I should probably specify this as a joke before it gets taken seriously. But regardless of my vendetta, I used to like the episode. My friends and I would occasionally quote the Harold No line. Mostly because we pictured it as Harold from Total Drama. But let's ride the fiery fist of pain too. You might be disappointed by how easy it is to die in this. You have to ride the roller coaster, collect balloons, and jump over holes in the track. Which is easier said than done. You have to click or hit the spacebar at just the right time to jump over them. 
If you fall off right away, you don't get the chance to try again, so you just wasted five tickets on nothing. But if you're a frequent player of Nickelodeon Flash games, this might look really familiar to you. That's because it's heavily derived from a game called Fiery Tracks of Fury. Both of these were made by Workin' Man, so this is kind of like a sequel to it. In it, both SpongeBob and Patrick are in the cart. You avoid giant fiery fists that punch holes in the track, which you have to jump over. You collect tickets and balloons to increase your score. It's pretty easy, up until you're faced with three fists to avoid. Once you take three hits, it's game over. It's oddly addicting. Give it a try if you don't want to spend five tickets on this. But you know what else this reminds me of? No, 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 please, no, anything but Operation Rail, I can't do this again. But speaking of games that reference other games, this is Monster Glover, a target shooter where you shoot tiny gloves at the monsters from the Monster Island series. You hit them till they go down and try to garner points. You get more depending on how far back the targets are. It's probably the easiest game in the whole thing. You just keep hitting a target and yeah. Though I really respect Working Man's commitment to continuity. Now here's Flippin' Fling, a much more difficult one. You have to flip coins into a certain number of colored cups by guessing the order the coin bounces from cup to cup in. Sometimes it gives you an easier goal to reach than others. Mr. Krabs will also try to snatch your coin, so you have to avoid his claw. Look at this guy watching us with all his clones. Reminds me of when Mr. Krabs asked a whole restaurant of Fred's to take his daughter to prom. A lot of this does seem dependent on luck, but it's kind of fun. I like watching the coin bounce around. Speaking of bouncing, this one is called Clam Dunk. Hmm. You have to shoot pearl balls into a clam basket, but you don't actually click the balls. You click the basket. Then it starts to move. You gotta get the timing right to land your shots, but it's not too hard. It's a great way to farm some tickets if that's what you care about, because you can then use them on the mystery box, which costs two tickets. You pick a box and get a prize. You can also spend two tickets on Secret Admirer. Here, you have to guess who your Secret Admirer is from a silhouette. It's always a twist, which is kinda clever. Now here's Stuff a Sea Bear. It's like a Build-A-Bear workshop, but with a sea bear. I like that a lot. Customers ask for a bear with a certain design, then you select options to make a bear exactly how they ask for it. Some of the options have very subtle differences, so you have to pay attention. But you also have to be quick to get as many points as you can. I'm really good at this, and it's probably my favorite of them all. I also love the idea that sea bears have a sort of teddy bear brand in Bikini Bottom. Is there a Winnie the Sea Bear down here too? I bet he steals jelly from jellyfish. Now the last free minigame is Hammer Slammer. Squidward is in a rocket thing and either Spongebob or Larry has to hit a button to launch him. Spongebob uses a hammer, but Larry just uses his claw. An arrow moves across a bar and you have to click at the right time to land it in between a target zone. If you hit it in the center, you get a perfect rank. If you get close, you get a great one. And if you miss, you get a... miss. If you get all perfects, you launch Squidward right out of the ocean. This one's a lot of fun, but it takes some getting used to if you want to get all perfect. So we've collected a few prizes here, so let's spend some tickets on the last two minigames. This one is called The Great Wombozy. The name is obviously a reference to the famous Wombo joke. So you have to Wombo two tickets over, then The Great Wombozy Wombos to figure out your fortune, such as you'll get a high score. So now let's Wombo on down to the last minigame and put it to the test. It's called the Tunnel of Glove, which, like the Fiery Fisto Pain 2, requires five tickets. You're a Cupid version of Patrick and shooting at attackers as you ride a boat through the Tunnel of Glove. It seems easy at first, until the flying ones hit you and you can't get them off. At least you have lives, so one hit isn't enough to kick you out this time. Though this many monsters in one of the rides ought to merit a safety concern. Didn't Glove World close down because of stuff like this? But this is a lot of fun. Worth the price of admission. And that about does it for the games you can see here. This little compilation is really cool and a great way to waste some time. You can challenge yourself to get as many prizes as possible and also enjoy some of the more addicting minigames. If you like the idea of going around a fictional theme park and playing games at booths, this might be the game for you. I'd say it's worth checking out. I hear it's a lot safer than Glove World. Thank you for joining me. I will see you in the next memory.